We are back with Connected Farmer. Today, we are going to speak about the crop tour in Illinois. Uh, we are seeing the yields recovering there for both corn and soybeans. And here to tell us about the, this crop tour is Jerry Giddell from Midland Research and Jack Scoville from the Price Futures Group from Chicago. First, we are going to start with Jerry. Jerry, what have you seen there on those crops? Well, it turns out that uh, because of the uh, issues we've had with the, our COVID uh, night, uh, issues in the U.S., Jack and I decided to split it up, and we would, we've been basically down, going down two corridors of uh, the interstates in Illinois. We have to get outside of Chicago. Of course, you sure don't, don't see much corn in the uh, unless you get south, south of the I-80. And so I started and uh, went down through 55 that goes down to St. Louis, and Jack went down uh, the route that takes you down towards Memphis on the east side of the state. So uh, my first county turned out to be uh, Grundy County, uh, which is south of Morris, Illinois, and that uh, – we kind of bump off the interstate. You sure can't make a, the field test on the interstate, so you got to get off those. But in the general direction of going down towards uh, Bloomington, and that uh, Grundy's always been an interesting one. It has some very good potential. It turned out to have a very good potential this year. It was uh, one of our better yields. Uh, uh, and that uh, the interesting thing about it is, is that uh, uh, our first um, uh, first. Uh, Field check turned out that uh, the uh, ears look good, nice and good length, good number of rounds. Yeah, the, the key to this whole thing is that you have to get a good field check. You have to do three things. You've got to figure out how many ears you have, what the size of the uh, length of the ear is, and how many rows there are. You get that together, you can come up with a yield estimate. And that's what Jack and I have done for many years in that doing this tour. And in this case, it turned out to be our second best yield uh, in about, uh, of course, uh, I can't remember all these numbers anymore. 254, there we go. Sorry about that. I should have had that in my head uh, from there. But it turns out that, you know, that's that's a solid yield. You say, wow, is this going to be like that? That's this 220, or excuse me, 210 uh, yield uh, level for uh, Illinois is going to be fantastic. But as we continue to go southward uh, towards uh, Bloomington, the one thing that really started to become a factor is, is that every time the crowd, the, the crop looked good because it's dark and green, because we did have some great rains in the last month. It wasn't very good uh, in June, but it was great and too, too heavy in May. And now all of a sudden we had uh, things brightening up. But when you walked inside of it, we didn't find the number of ears that we even found last year when we did the same tour. Now, last year we had a hard time finding the good field because there was so many black dirt out there because of prevent plantings and the excessive moisture that we had from April, May, and into June. In this case, it, it was only during May uh, and disrupted things. It didn't end up screwing up things badly. Anyway, that all being said, that the yields – are highly important as how many years you have. In our case, it looked uh, that we came through and now the, the next two or three yields checks that I had, uh, we did uh, 195, 200 uh, type of note. Those are good yields, no doubt about it. But they're probably not, oh wow, the state of Illinois yields are gonna be 210, 215, something like that. Uh, and actually probably one of the more interesting ones, the, the stop was, South of Bloomington on I, excuse me, Illinois uh, 51 is a major road that goes between uh, Bloomington and Decatur, and that and uh, Jack and I have kind of stopped in that area many times, and this year's turned out to be only 196 bushels. Well, and the interesting twist about it was it continued to have this issue of. Uh, <clears throat> limited numbers of ears. And we had 27, 28,000 actual ears in an acre. And then the other twist of it is that we started to see, in my case, 
tip back from the top of the year. And that had been for some of the early uh, July heat. And that takes away the number of kernels on the ear. And you'll see that on uh, some of the photos that we might be uh, uh, sharing with you yet uh, today too for people to look at. So uh, that's an interesting situation I think is really, uh, on an overall basis at least, that's a, an interesting twist that you don't see from the road. You don't see the fact that maybe some of these plants got uh, derailed from, you put it in the ground, but it doesn't mean they all come up out of the ground. And normally in Illinois, there are 30 to 32,000 population. So that's about the minimum they want. Once they sneak under 30,000 on the number of plants that are actually producing, they're feeling disappointed. And that's part of the reason why people decide to go ahead and do replants. The one big general dis, uh, description, description I have to say on the soybeans is uh, because of the wet weather that happened during May, I think a lot of land prep took care of a lot of volunteer corn and weed problems along with herbicides. And again this year, wow, what clean fields we've got. You drive along, it looks spectacular. It's a nice big green lawn uh, from there. but. It's not as tall as, uh, as it, we thought it was going to be. So that's a factor that I think is yet to determine what bean yields might turn out to be unless we see what the August weather turns out. And ultimately, uh, there's a potential for something above the 50 bushel level nationwide. I guess I'd, I'm not sure I'd guarantee a huge number like 53 or 54 bushels. Jerry, what about the central parts of Evelyn? of Illinois, I heard that a lot of farmers had to replant there. I, I don't know if Jack wants to respond. Uh, well, in, in um, central Illinois, of course, we did see the, the smaller populations and that was really the key uh, to the tour. Uh, and the reason why we found good crops, but not fabulous crops. Uh, the uh, the, other, the, the farmers uh, are looking forward to, to uh, harvesting some pretty good crops pretty soon. I feel like uh, the, I feel like um, uh, nobody should be real disappointed in what they're getting out of this thing. Um, it's uh, it's uh, you know, as I say, the, these crops are are very good, good to very good. They're just not super great. They're just not record yields. So. I think the farmers are going to be uh, are going to be happy with that. What they're going to be very unhappy with, of course, is the price, which uh, appears headed down to three dollars here pretty soon, and maybe below. And boy, we haven't talked about those types of prices in years, and I can't imagine that anybody's real happy about that. And Jack, uh, do, how do you assess those numbers compared uh, to what uh, came out from the USDA? Well, I think uh, I think USDA. I think everybody that's going out and taking a look at this thing from the road is is just you know looking at some very good conditions, and that the conditions are very good right now. The crops are very very green, dark green, um, and uh, seem to be you know the corn seems tall, or at least pretty tall, and the uh, beans look to be pretty good as well. In fact, very good. So I think that when you're looking at it from the road or when you're doing a satellite survey and a farmer survey, which is what USDA is going to do for the August report, you're gonna end up with some very high numbers. Uh, I think, uh, and potentially record-breaking numbers. I think that once you get in there and do the counts and do the hard work of you know, counting the bean, uh, counting the, the corn, Years, counting the kernels and uh, all that, that, that's when you find out that you really don't have quite the corn crop that you thought you had out there. But from the road, it looks fabulous. And I think everybody's, I think a lot of farmers haven't been out in their fields to check. And they're just going to assign a very high number to this, to this production estimate. Jerry, uh, would you see any disease from the road? Now, disease issues, uh, particularly in soybeans, uh, look pretty minimal. It's gonna, that's always a, a tough one to judge, though. Most people judge the soybean plants by, or soybean fields by how clean they are. 
so everything gives us a quick brush on it. Aphids, uh, I haven't heard, really saw too many insect issues on the soybeans. On the corn side, uh, with the kind of uh, interesting set of, uh, of weather we had, we had a wet, a cool wet uh, May that kind of slowed up this emergence issue, but from the point of view, then it dried out and that, and so uh, we didn't uh, see some of the, uh, uh, the um, uh, what do I want to say, the uh, smut problems, any of that type of thing happening with these uh, uh, ears and things like that we might have seen in the past from a disease issue uh, from there. So, no, I, uh, this is a, in Illinois, at least a pretty clean crop. Uh, I think the one thing, too, is that, that the trade does look, tend to have more of, a, of an idea of looking at the eastern corn belt as the, kind of the easiest thing because of the east coast bias and, and in the connection of time and that the uh, Iowa crop is definitely not as, an, as impressive looking uh, from the road or uh, maybe even looking in the fields. We have, we're going to get a lot more have the pro farmer tours and we have all these virtual tours and stuff like that coming up so we're going to get a little better feel uh, areas other than illinois but from the standpoint of looking at the illinois crop it looks uh, looks great the biggest thing is jack and i found out when you walk in the field there's maybe not as many of those plants that having as many years to be able to count now you know jack also uh, you know he said well it hasn't too impressive but uh, he also had, uh, he failed to mention that Dewitt County, which is one of our best counties all the time, it had a super yield of over 260. So there's a good yields in Illinois. We can't say they're not, but there's not as consistent a good yields as you'd think. Yeah, uh, everybody thinks it wants to be considering the way they talk about how great this crop looks. Jack, do you think uh, this crop uh, would be sold quickly? Uh, no, I really don't think so, given the current prices that we have now. I think farmers are going to try and store as much of it as they can. Uh, they'll keep basis levels relatively firm and help the farmer out a little bit uh, down the road. But um, I don't really see this crop moving all that quickly. Um, when you look at the world market, uh, we're selling a lot right now. But uh, the world knows that Brazil and Argentina are right around the corner and are offering, are offering lower prices than we are. So when you look at that, um, our window of opportunity to make a lot of export sales is very, very short now. Um, and, uh, you know, we better make, we better get as many on the, as much sale, as many sales on the books as we possibly can. Domestically, uh, the ethanol demand is going to be problematic all year. It has slowly but surely improved, but I emphasize slowly, and I expect that to continue to be the case going into the next year, especially with the coronavirus kind of reappearing here in the U.S. Uh, the feed demand uh, should improve. Uh, it's been fairly static for the last couple of quarters. And uh, that should get better. I, we we should have uh, better. Uh, we should have plenty of hogs and plenty of cattle out there, and that should be uh, that should be something that we uh, and poultry for that matter. And uh, with the uh, processors processing now, uh, the back the backlog of cattle and hogs and the need for maintenance rations will go away. Jerry, um, Jack just mentioned the coronavirus. Uh, do you think that uh, the virus could bring uh, any concern about the harvest time? Uh, I don't think there'll be uh, any uh, issues in harvesting this year's crop because of the, the coronavirus from the standpoint of maybe, there might be a few little labor problems at times, but in general, the, the mechanization of the Midwest farmer out here is so huge and that is so advanced that uh, uh, they can still get a lot of stuff done. I don't think they'll end up having problems of, of getting it, take it away from the combine and getting it to the elevator or getting it to their bends. Uh, and then also in those cases, uh, they, that really farm-based level of uh, potential coronavirus is pretty minimal. The, the major impact of coronavirus is in the major cities, then it goes into the secondary cities, but 
you know, in, in most rural areas where the farmer's at, uh, unless he ends up, uh, you know, going to the big town and getting himself infected, most of the time he's, he's if he keeps himself straight, he'll be fine and there'll be, the, the labor issues won't be that factor. Every once in a while, maybe from a standpoint of a, a applying something like fertilizer or something like that, where maybe some other people outside of the purely farmer community actually is pretty on some of this stuff. That might be an issue, but that's not going to impact the harvest. Well, guys, it was a privilege to have you both here. Uh, I thank you for sharing a lot of uh, information. Is there something else would you guys want to add? I'm all right. I think we cover everything that, of the trip and also a few other subjects. And I think that's, uh, well, I think the key thing is Jack and I kind of discussed after we've uh, been back and forth in this is, is that the one thing that we always find out is it's what's inside the field is so much different than sometimes you look on the outside, good and bad, you know. <laughs> okay. Very, very much so. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jerry. Have a good day. All right, have a good one. Thank you.